Hello teachers, today I'm going to show you how to use BlendSpace to create and curate digital lessons. So first you want to sign up on their website. In the right hand corner you just click sign up, say that you're a teacher, and enter in your information. So once you've signed up for the site, it'll bring you to the dashboard page. This is where it'll show your recent lessons, where you can create classes in order to organize your information a little bit better, and where you can begin creating new lessons. And in order to create a new lesson, you want to go in the upper left-hand corner, right underneath the Dashboard and Lessons tabs, and you want to click on the plus sign that says New Lesson. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to bring up exactly what BlendSpace looks like. So it doesn't look like much. It's just a bunch of squares, but within these squares, you can drop any type of resource straight into it by dragging it. You can add text or you can add a quiz straight there. Now, just like in any type of uh, document, you want to always title it first. That way you don't lose it easy. So I'm going to name this testing. And now it is saving up at the top. Now, you can do three things with these squares. The first thing I'm going to show you is you could add text. And you do that by clicking on the A. It says add text. So I'm going to click on that and it brings up a new tab. Now notice this is similar to almost any word processing document that you can do. So these are all my writing options up here. right? Very, very familiar with all of these. So I can click inside of it and a cursor will appear and I can write whatever I want. So maybe I'm giving my students directions, maybe I'm providing them with information, maybe at the end I'm giving them their homework, who knows. And then I can click done in the bottom right hand corner of this tab and you're going to see it embeds it straight into this first square, all the nonsense that I wrote. Now the second thing that you can do within a square is you can add a quiz. This could be good for a pre-assessment. You can have formative assessments throughout um, the lesson. So all you need to do here is click on Add Quiz. And notice you can just ask questions right here. So you can ask anything you want and then enter in the answers. Choose whatever the correct answer is going to be. If you need more answer choices, just click on the plus sign that says Add Answer. If you need more questions, down at the bottom there's a plus sign that says Add Questions. So you can click on that and it'll add a question for you. So I'm just going to write in some nonsense here. And then when you're done, just in the bottom right hand corner again, you can press Done. And now that quiz is embedded right here. Now the third thing that you can do is a little bit more versatile. You can drop any type of resource you want. Now where are these resources coming from? Well, on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a toolbar. It's pretty small, but it starts off, you're all automatically on the TES resource search because that's the company that's created BlendSpace. So you can find resources from other teachers just by searching it and find them and drag those in. The second tab here is searching YouTube. So let's say I wanted to search a YouTube video for writing. I can just search right there. And these are straight from YouTube. Or you can get the link and drop that in as well. So let's pretend like I want to add this Grammarly video into my blend space. All I have to do is click on it and hold and then drag it over and notice that the square goes from blue to white because it's saying that I'm putting something in it and then I release the mouse and now I have the video straight in there. So you can add videos and drop them straight in. Now the third option on the toolbar to the right is you can search in Google. So this is just a Google search at this point. I'm searching writing. Let's say that I want to use this Purdue Owl page. It's the same thing. I click on it and hold and then drag it over and now my students are going to be able to know to go straight to that website within the blend space. Other options that you have on the toolbar is searching Google Images. So same thing, let's say that you wanted your students to look at an image, maybe it's an example of work that you found in Google Images, you can just click on it, hold, and drag it over and be able to drop it straight into your square space. Now on the right hand side toolbar you have other options as well. You can search Flickr. You can insert a web page yourself and embed the link. You can upload things from Google Drive. You can search your other resources you've had on this website, the BlendSpace website. 
if you have a Dropbox account and you have things in there, you can certainly sync that up as well. Or you can upload videos and files straight from your computer. So those are everything that you can do in the toolbar. And again, it all works the same way. You grab whatever file you want and then you drag it over into the square. Now, if you run into a situation where you've used up the six squares that they give you, all you need to do is at the bottom, there's a plus sign that says add row. You're going to click on that and it'll add more squares for you. So you can do that as many times as you'd like. As you can see, it just keeps going. And again, the main three things that you can do here is you can add text, you can add quizzes, or you could add files from your computer, from YouTube, from Google, anything you want. So it's a very easy way to curate digital lessons for your students to have something there uh, for them all to look at and kind of move through, much like they would in Google Slides, but this might be a little bit easier to use. Now notice that if you want to preview what it'll look like for your students, all you need to do up at the top is hit the play button. And this is identical to what students are going to see when they go through it. So this was the first text box that I had made. So yours won't be entirely white because you'll have more stuff written down. Also notice that students can comment and you can comment straight on a specific box or specific cube that you made in your blend space. So you can start a discussion and maybe even your instructions are to start a discussion and have everybody post something. So you can go ahead and add a comment on the right hand side and certainly add a discussion to your lesson. Now to move through the slides, there's a little arrow here that I can hit and I can move through. So this is what the students would be doing as well, just moving through, answering. They can view results. They could submit it. Moving through again, the video shows up. Moving through again, this is the web page that I wanted them to go to. Notice it didn't even bring up a new tab. It specifically embedded the website page right into here. Now they can open it up in a new tab if they wanted to. They could click on these links, but the website is actually embedded straight into the slide, which is awesome can move on again here's the image that I added move on again here's the other image and then that was the end of my lesson as well so you could add any discussion on each slide that you want and it's a great way to foster an online learning experience for your students now when you're done notice at the top it says it's auto saved so I don't have to worry about hitting a save button but if I want to share it out to my students and I don't already have a class created in this site in the right hand corner right next to the print button there's a share option, it's green. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and notice the options that it gives you. I can share with Google Classroom, Twitter, embed a, a code, or I could just grab the lesson link right here and copy and paste this link just by highlighting and copying it and then pasting it where it normally would be. So sharing with Google Classroom is certainly the easiest. It'll just ask you to sync your classes and it'll ask you to pick what class you actually want to share it with, much like it does with other programs as well. So that is how you use BlendSpace to create and curate digital lessons.